Four. Is the verb transform function before, right? Eh? In which part? Two zero zero. No, in which part? Uh, oh, n. N? It's the uh, output over input, which is your. Oh, n, gain n? Gain yes. So, oh, n, n? Which part? Small signal. So it's a, so it basically is your amplifier, right? You need transfer function for amplifier. Why? Because you need to know the gain. So what is so special about this part of transfer function? If you can recall all the transfer function you derived before, you can usually get a what? Yeah, a gain, right? And that gain is a constant number. But for this part, you can no longer gain. get a constant number as the result of your transfer function. Uh. For this part, you will always get some equation, very uh, complex equation, as the transfer function. So what does it mean? If you are getting a complex function, as the transfer function, that means what? What do you mean by output is not always the same? Output is dependent on the frequency. Output depends on the frequency. Output depends on frequency of what? The input source. The input source. Okay, so the key idea for this part is to find your transfer function. Usually transfer function will write it in the frequency domain. So it will be the S domain. And usually for transfer function, we denote it as H, the capital H. So what's the general form of a transfer function? General form of transfer function? Omega. S over S huh? over S over what like <laughs> over one plus S over zero general form of a transfer function uh, it's not an example uh, it's no matter how, how no matter, regardless of the circuit if it is asking you to derive the transfer function in the end you should be able to get this uh. so in the end all your transfer function you should be able to write it in this form why we want to write it in this form? Because this form helps you to identify all the poles and zeros. No matter what's the transfer function you get, you just try to manipulate it until it looks like something like this. Once you manipulate the equation into something like this, you can see it's zero and poles easily. It's just the number below your S. Okay? So, just now we are talking about this transfer function. This transfer function is different from what you derived before for the previous part. But the previous part are all the constant number for a transfer function. But for this part, your transfer function will definitely contains the S term. And S is? S equals to? J omega. This omega is? 2 pi f. 2 pi f. So that means our transfer function now will be frequency dependent. Frequency. <coughs> so frequency of what? Frequency of your signal. 
Okay, I told I told you this already. Uh, for uh, for your amp, like it's not a for amplifier. Whatever signal you input here will be ideally will be whatever signal over here times the game, right? Let's say the game is A, and here is is uh no, B. Here will be B A A times uh B pick. Ideally, but in reality, this signal may not be look like this. That means your output signal, the shape of your output signal, may not copy your input signal, the shape. Why? It's because this guy will well what you amplify it well. It's not ideal. You know ideal so. Uh, again? Okay. No. He will not allow all the frequency to pass through. Yeah. Let's say here you, if your frequency is, is low, Andrew Hertz is okay. Andrew Hertz can pass through your op end and be amplified. The amplitude will be amplified. But if the frequency is very high, that's one let's say one mega, the one mega may not be able to pass through your op end. Because your op amp will amplify different frequency differently. So if the gain for your 100 Hz is A, if the gain for 100 Hz is A, the gain for 1 MHz may be B. So it's another another gain. So op amp is actually amplifying different frequencies differently. So because of this property, you have this transfer function. This transfer function summarizes how your how all the frequencies will be amplified by this uh, op end or assistant. So this is a more general form of your transfer function because it includes all the frequencies. So uh, I don't think I need I, I, I need to go through the basic math. You can just go back and uh, read your notes. The new notes. The new notes include all the basic math, I think. Uh, the most important slide is your for new notes is slide number 22. The most important slide is your slide number 22. Uh, yes, yes. Because this slide taught, <laughs> taught you how to find um, all the modulus, all the angle, and how to deal with uh, the modulus of a, of a fractional number, how to find the angle of a fraction, fractional complex number, blah, blah, blah. So the most important math slide is your slide 22. And, uh, And I think for this frequency response pad, your lecturer requires you to know how to construct a body plot. <clears throat> mm. So how to construct a body plot? What's the body plot, by the way? It's a log graph. It's a log. <clears throat> it's a log graph.
body plot. It's a lot rough and there are two parts for your body plot. Why is the magnitude? Because you see this transfer function. <laughs> it's a complex number, right? Although it's a it's a transfer function, it's a function, but in but it, it is still a complex number. So for a complex number, you will always have magnitude and Phase. Okay, so body plot actually consists of two parts. One is your magnitude, one is your phase. So what you are going to do is you need to plot the uh, magnitude of the transfer function and the phase of your transfer function. So this one is the magnitude because we are taking the modulus. And usually we will plot this uh, magnitude in the log scale. So it will be 20 log the magnitude. And if you are going to plot the phase, it will be So that's the phase plot. That means the y-axis is the phase of your transfer function. So how to plot, how to plot, how to plot. This one is, is I think it's your mass, uh, it's, it's not really circuit. How to plot the magnitude of a, of, of a complex number. Imaginary versus true. Imaginary versus true. Do I need to explain this part? Because this part is your map. It's not really circuit. It's like, for example, <coughs> you are given a transfer function, which is FC. If you are given a transfer function, which is HS equals to 1 over 1 plus S over P1. This one is a single pole system, right? Mm. Because you can see you only got one pole and you don't have zero. Okay, so if the transfer function given is this one, how you are going to plot its magnitude and phase? What's the magnitude of this? This is basically a complex number, right? What's, what's the magnitude of, a of this complex number? You just take a modulus, right? Take modulus. And because this one is a fractional number, so it's 1 over, you take modulus of the denominator, numerator, and take the modulus of the denominator. So, <clears throat> modulus of 1 is 1. Modulus of the below part is 1 plus, plus what? That's what uh, uh, uh. This thing is your what? This thing is your 1 plus j omega over P1. So it's 1 plus J omega over P1. What's the modulus of this complex number? 1 plus J omega squared. This is a math. This, this is not so cute. Okay. The only thing for, for this frequency path, the only thing which is related to your circuit is how you get this transfer function. This transfer function is derived from the circuit itself. So you will be given a circuit. Then you do your circuit analysis, you derive its transfer function, you get something like this. Then, after that, it's all about your math. It's how you are going to plot the magnitude of this equation and the phase of this equation. It's all math. You've got nothing to do with circuit. Okay, so if this one is the, is the magnitude of your transfer function, how you are going to plot it here? This one is the magnitude of your transfer function, right? So how are you going to plot in this graph? Is that label the pole? Yes. First thing first, you need to identify your pole first. What's the, what's the pole for this transfer function? 
P1 right? Okay, so P1 is a pole. What is so special about this pole? Again. What I need to identify the pole? What's the property of pole? What we call it a pole? It's because Okay? No. What we call it a pole is because once the game plot hit this pole, it will decrease. And what's the rate of decrease? 20 dB per decade. That means once the frequency increased by 10 times, the gain will drop by 20 dB. Frequency increased by 10 times again, frequency will drop by another 20 dB. Okay? So how about before this pole? Before this pole means what? My sister haven't encountered any pole of zero. So you will just keep a constant game. The game will be constant because it never hit any poles or zeros. So the game will just stay there until it hit this pole. Then it will start to drop. And this... Uh, and this slope is minus 20 dB for decade. Okay? For this system, it's a single pole system, so you will only have one pole. Alright? If you only have one pole, it is 10 times of P. Uh, so from P to 10 times of P, the drop in your game is minus A, is 20 dB, right? So here is your 20 dB. And from 10p to 100p, what's the drop in your game? Another 20. Another 20, right? So from p to 100p, what's the total drop of your game? It's 40, 40 dB. So your game is going to drop by 40 dB. Okay? So your game keep, keep dropping, dropping, dropping until certain point, at certain frequency, your game will start to become not zero, ah. Huh? As your gain start to drop, 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 okay? At a certain point, your gain will start to become 1. That means your system is become like whatever you put it as the input, the output will be the same as your input. There is no gain for this signal. You put in 1 volt, it will come up 1 volt. There is no gain. So the gain is 1. The gain is not 0. Huh? The gain is 1. Okay? If the game is 1, that means my HS, the modulus of my HS now is 1. So if you take log of 1, it will be, log of 1 will be 0. So if you are talking about the 20, uh, you are talking about log scale, here you should label 0. But you should always remember it's not, that it doesn't mean that the gain is 0. The system of, the gain of the system is 1. It's because we take the log. So, 1 becomes 0, because log 1 equals to 0. But the system is having a game of 1. Okay? So at this frequency, my system is having a game of 1. So this frequency is called your... What's the name for this frequency? What's the gain of your frequency? Of this frequency? It's a unity what? Unity. Unity it's a unity gain, gain frequency, huh? Because your gain is 1, so it's unity gain frequency. So how to get this frequency? How to get this frequency?
Oh, look at this frequency. Oh, look at this frequency. At this frequency, the game is one, right? At this frequency, the game is one. So you just calculate the modulus of your transfer function and let it become zero. Uh, let it become one. Because the gain is one, ma. Transfer function is the gain of the system. Because it's output over input. So you just let your transfer function, uh, the modulus of your transfer function equals to one. So you do the calculation, you can get the unity gain frequency. Because for this part is basically some uh, equation contains S. How about the face? How to get a face? <laughs> yes. If your transfer function is like this. So how to get the phase? The phase of your HS is It's a fractional number, right? So it's phase of the numerator over the phase of your denominator. What's the phase of one? Zero. Zero. Okay, so zero degree minus. Because it's divide, so it's minus the face of the below part. What's the face of this guy? Ninety. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the face of this one. Uh, this guy is written as one plus j omega over p one, right? What's the face of this guy? Huh? What's the face of this complex number? Can you inverse? Tangent inverse, tangent inverse omega over p1 mm. over 1. Okay, so basically it's this guy. So that's the thing. Now you have the equation, okay, and you know omega, it's just the frequency here, right? So you just you just plot the graph of this this equation. That's all. It will match. This is the equation, so you just try to plot the equation in this part. What does modulus of transfer function give you? The modulus of the gain, what's the equal to? Hmm? Hmm? Take the modulus of the gain, hmm. it's finding a negative, right? Yes. Equating it to 1 would mean... Because the gain is the modulus. Gain is the modulus. Gain is the magnitude. Gain is the number. It's not a complex number. Complex number means magnitude plus phase. But now I'm only asking for the, mo the magnitude. Because I'm only asking for the gain. Where is that on the graph then? On this plot? Hmm? How is this uh, gain represented on the plot? How is this gain? That means at this frequency P1, your gain is this amount. Let's so say here is A. So at this frequency P1, the gain is A. And this at this frequency 10 P1, your gain is A minus 20. So that means hmm? So when we find when we find the gain, we just know how to find the gain is going to y. How what's the purpose of finding where the gain is? Because we want to find a unity gain frequency. Because I don't know what's the frequency here. What's the frequency here? I don't know. It's like I know the y value, but I want to find the x value. So if you are very confusing about this part, you Go back and read or not. That's all, because it's all about math. I also don't know how to explain. It's just 
complex number mass, complex number plot. Got nothing to do with circuit. Okay. The only thing got something to do with a circuit is maybe we can talk next time. The only thing to do with a circuit is the behind part. How to get this equation? If you are given a circuit, how you are going to construct this H equation? This math, huh? I mean, you go back and figure out by yourself. I think you can figure out because it's not complicated. So last, last, uh, next session is our last one, uh, last session.